Welcome to part 3 of Let's Play Creature of Havoc by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 115. Um, now, I did read it at the end of the last part, but um, I shall read it again. Okay, here we go. Um, before you finally leave the adventures, you may decide to feed on them. If you do, you gain 4 stamina points. Did I do that? Okay, it went from 16 to 20, so I did. Okay, um, then you continue. Um, all is silent as you walk carefully along the passage. Eventually your ears pick up the sound of running water and the air becomes moist and cool. The sensation would be quite refreshing if it were not for an unpleasant smell which gets stronger as the sound of the water becomes louder. Soon you find yourself on a ledge in the face of a rocky cliff. Looking out you can see you are high over a vast cavern through which a river flows. Leading down from your ledge into the centre of the cavern is a flight of rough cut stairs. Um, this precarious staircase spans the river and is the only way onwards. But the thought of descending the stairs is not one which fills you with enthusiasm. Uh, the narrow steps have been made for um, have been made for human-sized feet, and your large pads will make your descent awkward. The smell, which was unpleasant before, is now horrendous and seems to be coming from the river itself. Its waters are murky brown, and the smell of excrement and decay is overpowering. Nevertheless, your only way on is downwards, so down you must go. Test your luck. If you are lucky, you turn to 166. If you are unlucky, you turn to 71. Okay, now, if I'm unlucky, it leads to death. So... I need to be lucky here. Um, my luck uh, luck score is, a, is at the moment 11, so I need to roll two dice, and the result needs to be 11 or less than 11 um, for me to be lucky. So I need this to be 11 or less than 11. Here we go. Okay, and we get a 6. Get rid of the buzzing. Good, so that's 11 or less. So I was lucky, but I have used a luck point. Uh, so... Need to put it down to 10. There we go. Okay, so I was lucky, so I turned to 166. Here we go. Oh, good. Yeah, that's the one that's missing. It goes from 160 to 165. It's missing. So luckily it's not on that one. Really annoying, that is. Uh, the descent is dangerous and several times you lose your footing and stumble on the slippery steps, but your luck holds out and you finally arrive at the foot of the staircase. The stench of the river is especially foul to your sensitive nostrils and your eyes search desperately for a way out of the cavern. Uh, you discover two openings in the rock face ahead of you. One leads to the west and the other to the north. Will you continue north, turn to 358, or turn west, turn to 77? We're going to continue north, turn to 358. Okay. Okay, excuse me one moment. Sorry about that. Alright, here I am um, at paragraph 358. Um, a passage leads from the opening into the rock face, and you follow it. But you find that as you travel north, the light fades rapidly. There are no glowstones in this passage, and you must progress carefully, steadying yourself by running your hands along both walls. The ground underfoot is rocky, and several times you stub your toes painfully on protruding stones. Later, um, later you can no longer touch both walls at once, although you are able to see. Although you are unable to see anything, you sense that you are entering a large chamber. Send to 257. A bit difficult to read there. Okay, here's 257. You cannot see a thing. Your feet shuffle noisily through the straw which covers the floor as you grope around the walls for a way out. If this cavern is the lair of another creature, then you may well be walking straight towards it, but you hear no sounds other than your own, and eventually you reach a hole in the rock which is large enough for you to walk through and leads to a passageway. You continue slowly along the passage, still groping your way, but you stop when a blue light flicks on in front of you. Yeah, the welcome hue of a glowstone makes you blink and turn away until your eyes become accustomed to the light. When you are finally able to take in your surroundings, you find that you are at a junction where you may turn either to the east, turn to 61, or to the west, turn to 309.
Um, hmm. There's something else that we can do here, actually. Um, if we have a look at um, our equipment, Uh, if you remember, I wrote down that we have a dull metal pendant and deduct 20 from paragraph number if it starts with that you cannot see a thing. Um, and here, here it is, you cannot see a thing. Um, so we're going to deduct 20 from this paragraph and we're going to, and we're going to go to 237. Sorry, I, um, I just read that in my notes as I was... Uh, uh, just at the end of that paragraph there, as I was checking what to do. Um, here we are, 237. As you shuffle around the wall of the cavern, you suddenly notice a strange sensation coming from your neck. The pendant you picked up is beginning to vibrate slightly and is giving out a faint hum. But when you can, excuse me, um, but when you continue around the wall, uh, the vibration fades until the pendant is once more still. You puzzle over this for a few moments and step back to where you were before. Again, the vibrations and humming come from uh, the vibrations and humming come from the pendant, and you pause to look at what is happening. The dull blue stone set in its centre is beginning to glow, and you watch in amazement as its colour changes from blue to a living red, as though a fire were burning inside it. An instant later, a single beam of red light shoots on the stone to a point on the wall in front of you. Following its direction, you can see what seems to be a piece of rock hanging in mid-air. As if ordered by the pendant, you grasp the rock and pull. It is not hanging in mid-air, but is attached to a rope, and your tug is answered by a rumble in the rock in front of you. A doorway is opening. The pendant you have found is in fact a magic talisman which has a special power. It is able to, it is able to detect hidden doorways. In future, it will warn you of the presence of secret doors, but you will have to watch for the warning signs. If you read a reference which begins, you find yourself, then you may look for a secret passage using the, using the talisman's help. Add 20 to the reference you are on at the time, and turn to this new reference. If a secret door is present, the new reference will make sense, and the talisman will show you its secret. If the new reference makes no sense, then there is no secret door. If you are able to, you may add one luck point to finding the secret door. Will do. Okay, we're back to 11 again. Good. Um, you may now either enter the secret door you have just found, turn to 458, or return to 257 to continue on your way. Okay, first I'm just going to write this down, so you find yourself dot dot dot, add 20, right. Um, uh, what should I put? Uh, you find yourself dot 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 okay do that and then just I'll put add 20 that's 22 the paragraph okay. oh that should have had a um yeah a parenthesis um there we go add a parenthesis outside okay there we go okay so now we add 20 now if uh, we want to look for secret passages with the talisman okay so where are we going we're going to um uh, we're going to turn to 458 and have a look at the secret door 458 here we go Here we are. Here we are. Uh, you crouch low and squeeze through the narrow gap. As you pass through the doorway, a single glowstone flicks on to reveal the contents of the small chamber in which you are now standing. The room is completely bare except for a large chest against one of the walls. Uh, you step over and examine the chest. You push it, shove it and bash it, trying to break it open. Finally, a lucky push opens the lid. Inside you find two mysterious objects. The first is a large circular plate made of strong metal. It has a sharp spike which protrudes from the centre on one side and two leather straps on the other. On the same side as the straps is attached a leather pouch which may be useful for carrying things. The other object is a piece of rough coloured rock. 
uh, about the size of your forearm. One end is wide and the other is much narrower. It is a dull green colour and glistens faintly in the light, but it appears very brittle. It may make a useful weapon gripped by the tapered end, but it would no doubt not last long in battle. You may take one of these items with you. Any metallic discs may be placed in the pouch on the plate if you choose this object. Um, metallic, oh yeah, right. yeah, coins. If you choose the plate, turn to 197. If you choose the rock, turn to 110. Uh, we're going to choose the rock. So we're going to turn to 110. You have chosen a crystal club. It is not valuable, but to your um, but to your way of thinking, it is a beautiful trophy. However, it is quite brittle. If at some time in the future you wish to use it in a battle, turn to reference 333 to find out what happens. But you must remember the number of the reference you are on at the time you, you choose to use the club, so you may return there afterwards. Now leave the chamber and turn to 257 to continue your journey. Okay, so we have, what is it, a crystal, yeah, crystal club. So crystal club and I'll put in parentheses uh, para uh, graph there we go. Uh, 333 and then new line there we go okay fantastic okay so we're going to go back to 257 now Uh, you cannot see a thing, blah, 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 I've already done that, haven't I? Okay, so we're going to go west. Go west. Life is peaceful there. Ugh, the pet shop boys. Yuck. Anyway, um, so we're going to go, and that was actually a cover of um, village people. Anyway, uh, I think. <laughs> anyway, so, so we're going to go west because life is peaceful there. Um, and go to 309. Uh... Yeah, so, so we're going to go to 309. I apologise for my attempt at singing the Pet Shop Boys there. But they really are terrible. So I'm sure actually my version sounded better than the original. Uh, the passage continues west, then turns sharply to the right. A few paces along the corridor, you reach a junction where you can either... where you can go either west, turn to 280, or north, turn to 271. OK, we're going to go west again, uh, Pet Shop Boys notwithstanding. So turn to 280. Side. A short distance along the passageway, you stop and listen. Distant footsteps and the clanking of metal warn you that creatures of some sort are heading in your direction. Do you wish to return to the junction and head north, turn to 371, or will you continue in the direction you are heading, turn to 342? We're going to continue, go to 342. Nearly there. The footsteps and clanking get louder and louder. You can feel your anger rising and your lips curl back to bare your teeth. Suddenly, the footsteps stop and you hear hissing noises. They have heard you approach. The passageway is rough and twisting and you are straining to see any signs of them ahead. You step nearer and nearer and they are doing likewise. Finally, you reach a length of straight passageway. Ahead, you can see the dull light of a glowstone and picked out in the light are two human faces. Evidently, they can see you too, as their reaction is similar. You stare at each other for a few moments. They hold their ground. Do you want to attack? Turn to 258, or will you wait to see what they do? Turn to, turn to 432. Okay, we're going to attack them. Turn to 258. Okay. Um, with bared teeth and claws at the ready, you storm along the passage towards them. They stand their ground, draw their weapons, and prepare themselves for battle. The leading adventurer lays a brown sack on the ground and raises his weapon as you approach. You must fight both adventurers one at a time. The passageway is not wide enough for them both to attack. Oh, that really makes it easier. Makes it sound like a bad thing. Uh, okay, warrior, 8-9, fight on leather armor, 7-8, okay. Uh, where am I? Right. Uh, blimey. Right, okay. Warrior. What was it? Seven, uh, eight, nine. Eight, nine. Right, okay. So if I, we're doing it for him there. And if we get a double, that means he dies instantly, remember. Alright, so his stamina is nine. And my skill is eleven, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I put warrior instead of warrior. That's 
tremendously embarrassing. Right, and stupid of me. Right, okay, so uh, roll for him first. So 8 plus 7 is 15. So 15, um, and I get 20. So 15, 20. Uh, fiddlesticks. 15, 20. That means he goes down to 7. Right, okay, next. Uh, 14, 19. That means I win again. So he's down to 5 now. And we're fighting them one at a time, remember. Wait, did I get a double? No, I didn't. Um, okay, 9. 8 plus 9 is 17. 17 and 22, which can't be a double. 17 and 22. Goes down to three. That's it, lovely. You need to put four there. Uh, okay, he gets ten. That's eighteen. I get ten. That's twenty-one. So eighteen to twenty-one. Was that a double? Yes, it was a double. So he's dead instantly, right? So eighteen and twenty-one. And I just put got to double. So now he is completely dead. Good. Okay, so the other one was Warrior in Leather Armour. It's quite a mouthful, that one. He was 7 8, wasn't he? Stamina 8, good. <laughs> Pardon me, blimey. Um, it, well, fight, I mean, uh, fight. Uh, I put war Firstly, I put Warrior again. Keep doing that. And secondly, it wasn't Warrior, but it was Fighter. And I keep burping for some reason. Or belching, whatever. Anyway. Uh, seven, eight. Okay, what are we doing? Um, all right, so he goes first. Okay, eight plus... No, no. Seven plus... Five is twelve. Uh, he gets twelve. I get sixteen. So I win. Uh, he gets nine. That's... Uh, sixteen. I, and I get eighteen. Sixteen to eighteen. I win again. Down to four. Now's the time to get a double. Okay, he gets eleven. Uh, that's eighteen, and I get eleven. That's twenty-two. All right, eighteen to twenty-two. Oh, that would have beaten my first score. No, he's down to two now. So one more hit. Okay, he gets six. That's thirteen. I get ten. That's uh, twenty-one. I mean, really, uh, really good today with the battling. Okay, he got thirteen, didn't he? Yeah, seven plus six, thirteen and twenty-one. That means I win and he's dead. Good. Right. Okay, that's the end of fighter and leather armor. Let's get rid of the buzzing because it's irritating as always. Ah, uh, dice program, I love you. Right, if you defeat them both, turn to thirteen. As the last adventurer falls to the ground and silence once more fills the passageway, you pause to rest from the exertion. You squat on your haunches and uh, and look at the two battered humans in front of you. You may now choose either to feast on the bodies to regain some of your lost strength, turn to 223. Um, search the bodies for anything that might be interesting, turn to 187, or poke through the sack that the first inch, first adventurer laid to one side, turn to 147. We're going to poke through the sack, um, 147. Not with something weird. There is something solid inside the sack. You fumble with the cloth, but cannot seem to find a way inside. Eventually you become frustrated, pick the sack up, and shake it. A small wooden casket drops out. As it lands on the ground, the catch flips open. Inside is a flask, and the bump has loosened the stopper. You watch as a green liquid inside bubbles and boils, turning to a green gas which slowly seeps from the neck of the flask and drifts and drifts upwards in the air before you. You are mesmerised by the swirling mists which gradually become recognisable as a face. It is thin with angular features and is decidedly human. Eventually its eyes open and stare into yours. Blah, 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 blah. I can't read it because it's not English. Okay. May you use your gift wisely. Okay. He apparently says... 
this is apparently what he says. He says, I have been awakened, awakened from my slumber. Who calls on the vapour of tongues? The heavenly bodies have taken their positions. My gift is granted. Uh, for better or for worse, my release bestows upon you the understanding you desire. Okay. Um... May, may you use your gift wisely. Having said these words, the green gas swirls once more and the face disappears. As if sucked by force, it disappears once more into the flask. Once it is inside, the flask and the casket begin to fade. Moments later, they have disappeared, but your unintentional encounter with the vapour of tongues has been fortunate. The spirit has bestowed on you its gift of language. From now on, you, you will understand most languages as spoken or written. You may translate coded speech by turning to reference 283, where you will find the secret of the code. Okay, brilliant. Okay, let's write that down. So, code of, what is it? Code, secret of the code, yeah, 283. Secret of the code on paragraph... 283. Okay, brilliant. Alright. Uh, whoops, that's the desktop again. Alright, um. Okay, what are we doing now? Uh. Was that what I wanted? Right. Uh, where do I where do I go now? Okay, let's go to two hundred and eighty three. Let's just see what's there. You are able to understand the last sentence of the Spirit's words as it has passed on its gift. Uh, throughout the book you will find a coded speech. Now that you have the gift of understanding, you can translate the code. Otherwise, all speech seems incomprehensible to your creature's mind. The secret is this. There are three rules to this code. Firstly, each vowel is replaced by the following letter. Thus, A becomes B, U becomes V, etc. Secondly, spaces between words are replaced with the last vowel to have, to have been used. Thus, all vowels mean nothing. They only indicate spaces between words. Finally, the actual spaces between words as they appear are entirely random. They mean nothing and serve only to mislead. Uh, with this information, you may now continue by turning to 137. Add one luck point for this discovery, but note this reference as you may want to return to it later to translate code. Okay, so 137... Let's go now. Um, bewildered by your experience, you wander off north along a main passageway. You soon reach a junction where you must decide whether to continue north, turn to 144, or turn east, turn to 204. Okay, there's one more thing that we need to do, actually. Um, we have a piece of hide on, for paragraph 337, which we can now translate. So we're going to turn to 337 and translate it. Uh, so, yeah, let's go there now. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, 283, what does it say? Because you had a piece of hide, if you remember. Okay, each vowel is replaced by the following letter. Secondly, spaces between words are replaced with the last vowel to have been used. And actual spaces are meaningless. Each vowel is replaced by the following letter. A becomes B, U becomes V. Okay, right, let's go back to 337 then, let's see if we can translate this code without having to look up what it is. Okay, each vowel, place the last letter. Pfft. 
Oh, right, oh, I get it, right. So each vowel has been replaced with the following letter. Yeah, you don't, that's a bit confusing. It implies that each vowel that you see is replaced by the following letter. But really what it means is is that is that vowels have been replaced by the following letter by the next letter in the in the alphabet. Excuse me one moment. Sorry about that, and I'm back. Okay, so I was going to three hundred and thirty seven. Here we are. Okay, yeah, so this is actually what this says is is remember vowels have been replaced by the letter afterwards. So every letter that's after a vowel is really a vowel. So S is after R, it's not a vowel. W is after V, it's not a vowel. J is after I, so this is actually an I. F is after E, so that's a vowel. B is after A. Um, so that, yeah. So that might, yeah, I think it's not definitely a vowel, but they might be vowels. So if a letter is after a vowel, if a letter is one after a vowel, it might be a vowel. That's how it works. Because this actually says swine beard. So the J is actually an I, but, and this is actually the F is actually an E, but the B isn't actually an A. Yeah, it's still a B, but the F is actually an E. And this B is actually an A. And that's how you translate it. And the spaces are meaningless. They're just to confuse you. So that's how this works. Um, and what was the other rule? Yes, yeah, spaces between words are replaced with the last vowel to have been used. Yeah. So the last vowel to, to have been used. So the last vowel to have been used was actually an A, and so this is actually a, a this is actually a space because this the last vowel is actually an A in swine beard. The last vowel in swine beard is A, so this A is actually a space. And then once you do that and keep translating all this nonsense using that rule, you'll eventually get this. It says, um, it reads rather, swine beard of your, you have been found, so it says swine beard of, so the O there, of your, um, you have been found guilty of the crime of willful and malicious arson, a most serious offence in the dry regions of Salamonis. As punishment, you are sentenced to undertake a perilous mission of recovery. You must travel northwards and enter the underground domain of Zaradan Mar, there to, uh, there to seek out and recover flasks containing swirling vapours. These are the vapours of Stittlewode. You must find the three flasks containing these vapours and return them to this court. On no account must they be opened. This is the sentence of the court and the geese... The geese has been... There, maybe they said it wrong on the thing I'm reading. And the, it's spelled G-E-A-S, I don't know what that means. And the geese has been cast. This is your punishment. You must succeed in your mission or die in the attempt. Okay. In the attempt. Yeah, and that's the last word there. Whoops. Underneath this writing is more, but written in a different style. And it says, Vapor of... I think that's... Yeah, this is Vapor of Knowledge. Um, flaxen Mane of Silverton. Vapor of Knowledge. Flaxen Mane of Silverton. Um, does not equal... Oh, equal slash minus winged helmet. That's what that says. Right, brilliant. Anyway, so we're going to go back to... What was it? 130... What was it? I'll go back to 283. You know, so that's that. That was fascinating. Uh, 137 it was. Right, let's go there. Uh, 
Okay, so bewildered by your experience, you wander off north along a main passageway. You soon reach a junction where you must decide whether to continue north, turn to 144, or turn east, turn to 204. We're going to continue north, so turn to 144, which is easy because it's just down here. Uh, the passage twists and turns until it leads you into a wide cavern. You pause to survey the way ahead. There are no creatures to be seen and all is still except for a dull humming which is forming an almost unnoticeable background noise. The wall to the left is riddled with large holes like a huge honeycomb and many of the holes are lit with a yellow glow. In the centre of the cavern, a few steps of the path, is what seems to be a small pool of shimmering liquid. You want to pass through this chamber as quickly as possible. Oh, do you want to pass through this chamber as quickly as possible? Turn to 239. Do you want to investigate the light coming from the the holes, turn to 24, or will you have a look at the pool of shimmering liquid, turn to 180. We're going to pass through as quickly as possible. So we're going to go to 239. You take the path carefully through the cavern so as to avoid any danger. The path leads out through a narrow archway into a passage which you follow east until you reach a junction where a side passage leads southwards. Turn to 298. Okay, 298. No, it's 299. Here we go. What is that? Is that an eagle? Oh, it's quite nice. No, it's a raven or something. You decide to choose the eastward passage and you follow it to... Moment, have I taken the right one? Right, let's go back to 137. I don't know if I've taken the right one. Oh, I went to 144, didn't I? Let me just double check. Yeah, I went to 239. Yep, yeah, 239, and then 298. OK, fair enough. You decide to choose the eastward passage, and you follow it to a sharp bend to the right. Almost immediately after the bend, you find yourself at the foot of a staircase, and you climb the stairs carefully. Then a corridor leads straight ahead southwards until you reach a T-junction, where you may either turn either turn either east, turn to 373, or west, turn to 401. Uh, we're going to turn east, so 373. The rocky corridor continues for some time and then turns sharply southwards. Ahead of you, at the end of the passage, is a sturdy wooden door. To your left is another door. Will you try the door straight ahead, turn to 15, or the door to your left, turn to 241? Uh, door to our left, to so 241. As soon as you enter the room, two blood orcs, warty creatures with powerful jaws and piercing front teeth, um, get up from a table and grab their swords. A voice is coming. Uh, a voice is coming from behind them, and you look up to see an elderly human with dirty robes and a long white beard groping the air in front of him and calling out, "Blah blah 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 blah." You must resolve your fight with the blood orcs who are now upon you. They both attack together. That human says, "If you translate using page 283, uh, paragraph 283." Um, who is it? What is happening? What has disturbed us? Please, God, release this black eye curse. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, so we need to fight the blood orcs together. First blood orc, second blood orc. Let's go. And I've got to... First blood orc, ord orc, thank you. What was his skill and stamina? Uh, 7787. 77. Just one more there, that's it. Second Blood Orc. 
And he was 8-7, wasn't he? Okay, so we're fighting them together. Remember, the, the double rule remains that they die instantly. Okay, 7-7, seven, seven, let's attack him and concentrate on him. Okay, so 11, that's 18 for him. And I get a 5, which is 16 for me. So he wins. 18 and 16, that means he wins. That means I lose one point, remember, because I'm... This is a different book has different rules. And then we have to roll for him at the other one as well. So he's 8-7, wasn't he? Yeah, 8-7. Okay, so that was 18. Yeah, he also beat me, so... Okay, so that puts you down to 18. Okay, so... Um... 7, that's 14, and 17. 17, that means he goes down to 5, but now I have to do it for the other one. He has 8, um, 15, you got 15, yeah, that means I parried his blow, that's what I have to put. Another one of those, right, good. Okay, um... Four, he gets eleven, and I get eight. That's nineteen. So eleven to nineteen. Three, and I have to roll for him as well. Twelve, twenty. Right, so he actually hurts me. So. Alright, so he's down to 3 now. Okay. 8, that's 15. I get 10, that's 21. So 15 to 21. He's down to 1 now. But I have to roll for the other one. Okay, that's 20. That's not as good as me, so I, I parry his blow. Alright, so now one more hit for the other one. Okay, he gets 7, that's uh, 14. I get 5, that's 15, so 14 to 15, and he's down to naught now, okay, that's the end of the first Blood Orc, but then I have to roll for the other one, so he's 8 plus, 8 is 16, so he just beats me, so I lose another health point, another NA there, no, I did control V and it didn't press the control properly, that puts me down to 16, blimey, okay. Being pretty unlucky with these two. Okay, so now we're just rolling for him. So 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 to 21. Now we're fighting normally. Okay, next. Okay, uh, 11 to 17. I win. Oops, did a full stop there. Instead of a comma. Okay, so that's another one. Okay, 16 and 17 I get for that one, so 16 to 17 I win again, just. Put some down to 1, last one hopefully, I hope rather. 16 and 19, good, he's dead. I didn't even check to see if I got any, any doubles or ingress, I always forget that, never mind. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so he's dead, good. Get rid of the annoying buzzing. Okay, and move on. If you defeat them, turn to seven. The pain is... Whoops, that's the wrong paragraph. I did one instead of seven. With the lifeless blood orcs lying at your feet, your attentions now turn to the human in the dirty robes. Yeah, he is staggering about in fear for his life. His, his eyes tilted slightly towards the ceiling. And he says after uh, translation, he says, uh, he says, have mercy on a blind man, whoever you are. If you are friend, then lead me from this place. If you are foe, then leave me be. You are strangely silent. Who are you? Do you understand me? My God, intruder. If your plan is to do away with me, then do it quickly. Otherwise, be off with you.
here, have mercy on her. What else does he say? If you can understand, alright. If you can understand the human, turn to reference 200. What? That's what it says on the thing. Would you ignore him and feast on the meat of the blood orcs, turn to 420? Would you slay him quickly to stop his noise, turn to 25? Or will you simply leave the room? It says in my instructions to turn to 200. How do I know to turn to 200? What paragraph on? Okay, if you can understand the human, turn to reference 200. It just says turn to 200. Uh, okay. How do I know to turn to 200 though? I don't... Right, otherwise be off with you. So what's the bit that says otherwise quickly? Otherwise be off with you. Oh, it says if I think it says it here. If, yeah, if you can understand the human, turn to paragraph 200. Yeah, that's where it says it here. Okay, turn to 200. Right, that's where that's where it says. I was wondering in my instructions it says turn to 200, and how does it know that? Because it's written there, but you have to translate it. I see. Fantastic. Side effects of not having completed this book before. I'm doing this effectively just from other people's instructions rather than my own, which is unusual. Um, just give me a sec. Okay, the old man offers to help you. The old, the old man offers to help if you will lead him out of the dungeon. My name, if you wish to know it, is Hanicus. I know much of what goes on here. He starts, um, for I was the keeper of these dungeons before Zaradan Mar decided that an undead would be more ruthless than an aging wizard, and gave that damned um, Dara Moose, curse his soul, my position. The only reward, the only reward for 36 years' service was my black eye curse and a future as a plaything to be held captive at Dara Moose's pleasure. All this is interesting to you, and you allow him to continue. I can lead you straight to the undead keeper if you will lead me. If you see what I if you will lead me if you see what I mean. We must travel east until we reach the lair of the chatter matter. But ignore his prattle, for he seeks only to feed on your flesh. North then we must travel to reach Daramus. I can help you slay him with this. From inside his robes he pulls a silver ring which has a large bulbous stone set in it. He walks over to you and gropes for your hand finding it eventually. Look, this ring will fit any finger, even yours. There. Um, when you meet um, Daramus, uh, Daramus, smash the stone into the wall. It will break and release a deadly gas. Deadly, that is, to the undead half-elf. It will not harm humans and will no doubt have no effect on you. Add two luck points for this information. Do I need them? No. You look at the ring on your finger admiringly. The human is asking for it back. Would you give it to him? If so, turn to 159. If not, turn to 360. Um. There's something else I was supposed to read, actually, on paragraph 7. I've marked this up a bit. I'm sorry. Um... Is more to read. It says, uh, he actually says after, turn to paragraph 200, and here it says, So what is it to be? Um, is, my, is not my misery uh, to. Where is it? Paragraph 200. So what is it to be? Is not my misery enough? Um, show some pity. Give me gold and feed me, or leave me be. And then turn to, t turn to paragraph 200. Okay, so let's go back to 200 and then let's uh, carry on from there. Made a little bit of a pig's ear of that, I apologise. Um, 
Okay, would you give it to him? If so, turn 159. If not, turn 360. Uh, we're not going to give it back to him. So turn to 360. We're not going to give the ring back to him. You have no wish to give the ring back to the blind wizard. It may prove very useful to you in the future, and apart from that, you think it looks splendid on your finger. The old wizard wants you to lead him away, but your attitude is mixed. He may slow you down, and you have learned all his useful information. Uh, you stand up, brush him aside, and leave. If you come across Daramus, you may use the ring as follows. When you are given the option to grab him and do battle, add 50 to the reference you are on at the time, and turn to this new reference. Turn to 138. Okay, let's write that down. Okay, I'll just put ring. Um, when told to grab Daramus, I think that's how you spell it, isn't it? No, it's double R. Um, grab him and do battle. Grab Daramus and do battle. Um, add 50 to paragraph number and turn there. Okay, brilliant. Now turn to 138. You turn south outside the door and head down to the next door. There is no other way onwards. You open the door, turn to 15. Uh, yeah, turn to 15. Uh, where is it? There we are. All is silent as you enter. The room is large with a high ceiling and a musty smell permeates the air. There are four doors leading from the room, one in each wall. A long table stands in the middle of the room and on it is a short stick with a metal head lying next to some small spikes. A couple of planks of wood are resting against the table. This is evidently a workroom of some sort. In one corner of the room, you find the products of the work carried. Um, you find the products of the work carried on here. Two tall and thin wooden boxes, almost as tall as you are, are leaning against the wall. They are standing next to a hole in the wall, just above floor level, which is wide enough to fit one of the boxes through. You puzzle over this for some time. What do you want to do? Have a look inside the boxes, investigate the hole in the wall, ignore what you see. Uh, apparently the ring is called Ring of Holy Blessing. I'll just put that down. Holy Blessing. There we go. Okay, good. Okay, so we are going to ignore what you see. So, 436. You have four doors from which to choose. Would you try the door on the east wall, turn to 49, the west wall, turn to 409, the north wall, turn to 262, or the south wall, turn to 201? Um, we are going to take the the door in the east wall. So we're going to turn to 49. Who's that? I don't know. But I have to know. Oh, it's an elf or something. Okay, 49. The passage leads east. A short distance ahead, you arrive at a rocky bridge across a deep chasm. Far below, you can hear the sloshing of a slow-moving river, and you step up to the edge of the bridge to get... A better look. A disgusting smell is coming up from the river, and as this hits your nostrils, you stagger a few paces backwards. Uh, but this is the only way on. The bridge is narrow and wet from the moisture in the air. No doubt it is slippery too. Um, nevertheless, you have no choice. You hold your breath and step onto the bridge. But halfway across, you lose your footing on the slippery bridge. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 457. If you are unlucky, turn to 60. Let's test our luck quickly, and then I'll end the video, I think. Okay, so it needs to be 11 or less, or less than 11. Yep, 3, good. But I've used a luck point, so I have to take one off. There we go. 
Pity I can't get the luck points I got earlier and add them on now, but, you know, can't do that. Okay, apparently if I'm unlucky, it leads to death. So, um, I was lucky, 457. You regain your footing and hurry across the bridge to, to the other side. Shaken by your near accident, you continue until you arrive at a side passage on the right. You do not like the look of this side passage, so you continue eastwards, turn 122. Here it is. Um, you follow the passage eastwards, peering ahead as the glowstones flick on to light your way. Eventually you arrive at two doors and you listen for any clues as to what may be beyond. No noise comes from, be uh, from behind the door in the north wall, but there are definite sounds coming from behind the door in the east wall. A heavy breathing is unmistakable and is interrupted by loud snorts. This sounds ominous. If you wish to try the door in the north wall, turn to 154. If instead you decide to charge the door in the east wall, turn to 263. Okay, and on that note I'm going to end the video, so we will decide what to do in the next video, whether I'm going to take the north wall or charge the east door. So, I'll just put 122, next paragraph, and I'll thank you for watching. Uh, made a lot of progress today. Um, so, in the next video I'll be deciding whether to take the north door or the east door, or whatever. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.